Hello stampers! Jackie Ball High from Comp and Stampers. I have another brand new bundle to share with you today. You know, over the last couple weeks I've been sharing a lot of the brand new products out of that brand new Stampin' Up! catalog. So today it's the Blossoms in Bloom. Now you may have seen some samples floating around with this already because it's probably one of the most popular ones that came out of the pre-order where us demonstrators could purchase it early. Love that is big and bold. Makes card making simple and you know me, we're all about simple. Now quickly, before I flip that camera down, remember, if you don't already have a Stampin' Up! demonstrator, I would love to be your demonstrator. I'd love to help you with all your stamping and Stampin' Up! needs and I'd love to get you a catalog if you'd like one. So right down in the description of this video will be a link to take you over to my blog. And over there, just click on catalogs and you can request a catalog because I'd love to send you one of these brand new ones. It's amazing as always. So without further ado, we're gonna get stamping for today. So let's flip this camera down. Now we're not gonna spend a ton of time looking at the products I'm using, but when we have a new catalog, I really like to just give you a little bit more information and show you what we're using because it's all brand new to both you and myself. So this Blossoms and Bloom, this is what it looks like in the catalog on page 51. It is a ginormous stamp and then lots of little ones and great all around greeting. So this is a really good stamp set for just all around stamping. You're gonna be able to get so much use out of it. Now it is bundled with the ginormous dies. So I got a couple of them out here. And these actually layer, they will cut out um, or you can stamp and you can layer over it. You can layer these together. There's just so many possibilities. So. Today, we are actually just gonna focus on the stamp set. I wanna show you some tips, and we're going to use the Stamparatus, which I haven't used in a while, so I thought it was a good time to pull out the Stamparatus, give you some tips for that. We're gonna do some heat embossing, because you know me, I like that white on black look, and it really works best with heat embossing. So I have tons of tips with you. Now, I think just because this has so many possibilities, and I hate the word technique because Technique to me sounds hard and messy and lots of work, but um, I think I'm going to do an online class with this bundle and show you different techniques or different ways to use it and how you can get a watercolor look, how you can layer the stamps with the dies. And there's just so many different options that I think probably in July and August, this might be our online class. So if this is something you want, you know, you can look forward to that tutorial at a later date. And I'm sure I'm gonna be sharing lots of projects just with my regular videos with it too, just because the possibilities are endless with it. Now, Stamparatus, it, you're not familiar with the Stamparatus, it is a tool to help you with your stamping and we're gonna talk about that when we get to that. So let's set the catalog aside and get to our project. Now, like I said, there's gonna be just lots of things going on in today's video here. So hang in there all the way to the end so you don't miss anything. Stamparatus, it is a stamping platform, I guess would be the technical generic term for it, but it helps you sometimes get a better image I like it with my great big stamps. It's awesome for multiple stamping. Now, we could go on and on and on about the Stamparatus. So, another reason to hop over to my website. In today's blog post, I am going to have links to a whole video series that I did with the Stamparatus, showing you everything you can do with it and different ways to use it, because you can't cover it all in one video or it'll be way, way too long. So, for today's though, what I wanna tell you about is typically when your Stamparatus comes, you get this foam pad with it. If you are using the cling mount stamps because they're thicker, you don't use that. You just use the platform here. But if you're gonna use the photopolymer like we are today, okay, which are the thinner see-through ones, you need to put this foam pad in here just to make it a little bit thicker. Otherwise the stamp's not gonna reach the paper down there. Now, you can, as an optional purchase, get the grid one. I think they call it the deluxe one. And this is in the catalog, and I'll have the links for it on the blog post as well. I like to use that because then I still kind of have my grid, and this wipes off real easy. So if you do get ink on it, you can clean it off. Um, another thing I use quite often is the little grid paper. Now you've seen me use this just on my regular videos, but this is designed in size to fit in your Stamparatus. So if you like scrap paper underneath what you're stamping, this is perfect for that as well. Okay, for today's project, I do have a quarter sheet of Whisper White. 
It's a little bit bigger than I need, but we're gonna trim it down after we have stamped our big image. Now, the easiest way to do this when you're starting out, especially with a big stamp like this, is to just lay it, make sure it's clean, but lay it where you're going to want it to be placed on that piece of cardstock. And notice my cardstock is tight in the corner here. Now this does come with magnets. You can always put magnets on here to hold it in place. But to me, if I'm just gonna stamp one image and I know it's up here nice and tight in the corner, I don't worry about the magnets. Then we just close this and we pick up the stamp. Now we know once we ink it, it's gonna go where I want it to. So to ink it, we're going to just take our ink pad here and I'm gonna tap around my stamp, make sure my flower is inked really well. Um, now, one of the reasons I grabbed the Stamparatus when I use this, just because the stamp is so big, you'd have to put it on the largest block and it's pretty big to pick up and hold. So now after it's inked, I can just go ahead and I can close it, give it some pressure so we get pressure all the way around. Now, the paper tends to stick to it, especially with these photopolymer, but no big deal, just peel it off. Now, this is where kind of the beauty of the Stamparatus is. If I was to wanted to make a whole bunch of these, now I could put another piece in and stamp again and just keep going. So that's the only part we're gonna use the Stamparatus for on the card. So like I said, there's lots of ways to use it. So make sure you check out those other videos of mine. So to finish off our card here, we're gonna go ahead and take the little dots and I have, I think, Fresh curry? Nope, Daffodil Delight. Melon Mambo, and now we have Daffodil Delight, and we're gonna go ahead and stick those in the insides of our flowers. Now, all of these colors will be listed over on the website as well, along with the complete recipe of this card. And I have a couple other ones that I'm gonna share with you as well, so you'll have lots of stamping ideas. Now, you notice with my leaves, and I do this a lot, I tend to stamp one, and a second one. Gives you two different shades, um, kind of fills in you know, your image a little bit better. So we're just kind of going around, and actually some of this is gonna end up getting cut off, which you'll see in a second here. So, okay, our image is all stamped. Now remember, I did tell you that this was bigger than I needed. For the card that I'm making, I do only want this to be, I think, three and a half by four and three quarters. So what I'm gonna do is just trim this down. And to make sure we're somewhat, oh, we don't want the scoring blade. There we go. We're gonna kind of do some on one side and then we'll go ahead and we're gonna flip it. No, I want three and, a, three and a half, I think is what I want. So we're gonna cut off of both sides. That way I have my flowers coming off of both ends. And we'll do the same here. I want this to be four and three quarters. So we're just kind of trying to somewhat center up those flowers. Yeah, I think we're gonna take that off. And then let's come back to four and three quarters going that way. There we go. So we have cut it down. Now, again, the reason why I started big was with that Stamparatus, I needed you know room to put it in the corner there, but then it trims down nice and I can kind of get it exactly where I want it. Now, for our greeting, I said we were gonna talk about heat embossing, which you know a lot of times I do this and I don't show it to you. So today we'll show it to you. Now. I'm gonna have a piece of black cardstock here, and I am going to, what do we have here? Sure do miss you. And we're gonna use the Versamark. When you emboss, you need a sticky ink, because you need that embossing powder to stick to it. We're gonna just go ahead and we're gonna stamp it right on our scrap of black there. And then right after stamping it, take your embossing powder and kind of shoot, um, dump it on there. Okay, I like to use these old Tupperware containers and then shake off the excess and you can see where our white powder stuck to our ink. So we can go ahead, set this out of the way and then we're gonna grab our heat tool. Now with this, we'll see if I can talk over it. If you haven't used it um, recently, you wanna just give it a little bit of time to get heated up and then you're gonna start moving it around on your embossing. Now make sure you know, you kind of move it around and you will see as soon as it starts turning white or like shiny, I guess, you'll see that powder melting. There you go. See how it just started right there in the R? Now it's gonna go pretty fast. So keep moving it around till you get everything nice and shiny like that. You don't want to overdo it. When it's done, 
it's done. Um, if you keep melting it, it's going to flatten out and you're going to lose that nice raised shiny image. So for our card, we're actually going to just use our paper snips and I'm going to cut this out. Um, you know, these cut out pretty nice because they're nice and straight. So we'll just trim all the way around. I think we'll take a little bit more off the top. And let's see, that's kind of I'm kind of picky here. I tend to keep going around till I like it. There you go. So there is that. And now it's time to put together our card. I do have just a layer of basic black that this is going to fit on. Um, and once again, all of these measurements will be over in the card recipe on the blog. So let's go ahead and put some adhesive on there and we will put that right on top of that basic black. I use a lot of black. Um, I think it just really, really makes those cards pop. Um, so we'll put this right on there, like so. Um, okay. And then for our greeting, we gotta use some dimensionals. So we'll go ahead and we'll just stick a couple of those here. Now, after I'm done with this card, I got a few other ones I wanna share with you as well using the stamp set. And let's see. We'll just go ahead and let's put it right there. Now, we always wanna stamp the insides, but I don't like colored on the inside. So we're going to just go grab a piece of Whisper White to finish off our inside. Okay, now for this, you could use a couple of the smaller stamps, but I want to go ahead and use my big stamp again. So what I'm gonna do, I actually like to have paper on here, then I know that it goes where I want it. And I want just the edge of this, so what I'm gonna do is I have to kind of play, play around a little bit here. Um, I think that's where I wanted it, was right there. And again, I'm gonna just hold it here because it's not like it has to be in that one perfect spot. And I'm only gonna stamp it once, so if it's not completely lined up, it's not a big deal. So we can go like so, peel that off. And now we just have our flowers down on that bottom corner so we can Give it some leaves. You know, you could put as many flowers or, you know, as much of that flower as you want. Um, it's just giving you smaller space to write. So if you want to write a lot, don't put many flowers. If you want a really short message, hey, how you doing? Then put a lot of flowers on there. So now I told you my trick. If you get a card with lots of stamping on the inside, that means I didn't want to write a lot. <laughs> so we'll stick that on the inside like a so. And there's that card. Now, let's go ahead and grab a couple other cards that I made. So these first ones are just using the stamps, not using the dies yet, but you can see that it works perfect even for just a note card. Just stamp the big flower on there. You could add any of the greetings, you know, very versatile, lots of great greetings. And here I did stamp some of the little flowers to finish off the inside as well as the envelope. Then this one is very similar to the one I made for you today. However, I did use the textiles embossing folder. And I don't know, can you see that? I After I did all my stamping, I did run it through the die cutting machine and embossing machine um, with this textile. Been using this one a lot. I just really like the texture it gives it. It's almost like a watercolor paper look at this point compared to just the flat whisper white on there. So there's that one. This one is made very similar. I did just use a banner die here to cut that out. Added a couple of rhinestones and a little bit of linen thread on that one. And there's the inside of that. So those are just stamped. Now, check out this one. And I'll do one like this in a future video and it'll probably be part of that online class as well. But you can see here, I did stamp underneath. So that is the same image I stamped here, but then I used that big die for the outline and I put it on top like that. Isn't that pretty? And then this one, there's no stamping other than our greeting, but I did use both dies and just layered them. And here on this crumb cake, you can see that textile embossing folder as well. So 
This stamp set and die bundle has so many options. I can't wait to, wait to share a lot more with you. But today, I just kind of wanted to introduce you to the stamps. Talk about the Stamparatus a little bit. And don't forget, if you'd like more information on that Stamparatus, go to my website. Link is right down there in the description. And I, I did a whole video series when it first came out that shows you all the different ways to use it along with a ton of tips for using it. So check that out if you'd like some Stamparatus information. Well, guys, I think that's it for me today. I look forward to stamping with you again real soon. Have a stamp happy day.